find through the screen. Ooh. Watch. No, it's. I told you, it's always three. <laughs> <laughs> Artsy fartsy, where Ben tries crafts. So all of these little things, these are all phalanges, phalanges. You take a roll of toilet paper and you draw a spider on it. And when you do that, you end up with this kind of thing. <laughs> Can you do magic for me now? Now, <laughs> let me tell you, this line was so long and I'm like, you want me to do magic now? <laughs> oh, he stuck his tongue out! I don't know what that means! Uh, you know, I cut up a carpet, I sewed up myself. Here we go. Oh, okay. Try it. It's, it looks like you cracked your neck. Like that. Like, and you have to give good advice about it, bad advice about it, and worst advice about it. Oh! My goodness! What just happened here? Got that's a real, got that's a real bird, people. <laughs> Let's end with a dad joke. Have you heard what Mozart's up to lately? He's decomposing. Because you know he's not composing. He's. Hello and welcome to Forever Young Live with me, Ben Young. I'm here to provide some quality online programming for all ages. Thanks so much for everyone who's tuning in. If you're tuning in right now, please share the stream so that other people can hop on and watch it live. And please feel free to comment anytime throughout the show. I wanna make this interactive for all of you. So let's jump right into the show. It is time for the word of the day. We always have a word of the day and today's word is giddy. Giddy is an adjective and it means dizzy or, my favorite, lightheartedly silly or joyfully elated. Used in a sentence, I'm so giddy about Forever Young, I can hardly stand it. And I'm sure that you guys are all giddy as well. So we always have a special guest on the show, and um, it's mostly magicians from all over the world, but today we have a very special, actually two guests for the first time, two guests at one time, Fred and Bobby Becker. Now, if you have ever been on a cruise ship ever in your life, you've probably run into Fred and or Bobby. They've been working on cruise ships for since boats existed almost, not that they're old. Sorry, Bobby and Fred. Uh, and they are magicians and uh, Bobby is a singer as well. They're showbiz extraordinaires and I'm so psyched for you guys to meet them. And uh, before we actually bring them on, I'm going to show you a little clip of kind of what they do. They were on the show Penn and Teller Fool Us and uh, this is their little interview before their magic segment. Let's see, let's bring this up. Hi, I'm Fred. And I'm Bobby. I started working on cruise ships, so I travel the world. One day I just decided I'm gonna go sing on a cruise ship where I ended up meeting Fred. She was reluctant to be what she calls the girl in the box. Yeah. I, I said, just... I'll do it for a short period of time, mm -hmm. eight years ago. How's that working out? Yeah. <laughs> it turns out I do not actually have an assistant. It's more like a hostile witness. I said, if I'm going to be in the show, I want it to reflect the fact that I don't really want to be in the show to, to come out. To be part of the show. And it can be funny. And so that's what we've done. We want to put on a good act. We want to do something that people can relate to, you know, all of the married people out there. So it's sort of like live on stage marriage therapy. Yes, there's that. Ben, we can't hear you. Uh, ben, we can't hear you. All right, we lost audio on our end, Ben. Oh, nope, that's well, that my fault. That okay. was my fault. I'm a millennial who doesn't understand how to use technology. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone, we'll do that again. Welcome, Fred and Bobby Becker. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so it was super fun watching you guys have to watch your B-roll footage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm watching you tell your joke, and then you look over at Bobby like, yeah, remember when I said that? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that was, I, I wish I would have never said it eight years ago, because now whenever we play the clip, it dates that it, it clip. It dates right. the clip. <laughs> I'm right. Like, yeah, that's now been 10 years ago. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, I was about to say, because it's been a little bit since you guys were on. Yeah. Yeah. We were season four. You what were you, season three? I was season three. Yeah. 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 
Look, um, we're all getting old now, Ben. Yeah. Did you hear the old crack? I heard I the heard old that. crack. Yeah. I know. I, I need to get my walker before we leave. So. <laughs> well, I, I didn't mean it. All right. You know, that's what I get for not writing a formal intro for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's true. We have been on ships for a very long time. Most people <laughs> didn't know there was entertainment on the Mayflower. And I was, you know. That's funny. I feel like you've told that joke before, but it's very funny. No, no. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because, so Fred is a magician, Bobby is a singer, and you guys both had your own individual careers going on, and then they intersected, and now you guys are the Beckers. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Do you exactly. want to talk a little bit about, like, who you are, what you do, since my intro was so horrible? <laughs> it was a good intro. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so I started in ships way back, you know, when they you ha used to have to use oars to move them around. And Bobby's a good bit younger than me, so she actually got to see the steamships and things like that. Actually, that's true. I worked on the last remaining steamship. It was an, it was an SS, so not an MS. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, sure enough, uh, she was a featured singer on board a ship that I was on as the magician. And funny enough, she never actually came to see my show. She was the last person in the uh, cast that I met because I don't know. I never went to the, I don't know, because I did, we worked a lot during that time. I was doing about eight shows a week, mm -hmm. uh, traveling from ship to ship. So we were kind of a traveling production cast and um, and so I never went to the shows because I was resting, trying to keep my voice in shape. Yeah. yeah. So I never really saw his show until um, one of my friends said that she was in it. So as his assistant. So then I went to see it. And then I started to realize that, you know, he was like the lone guest entertainer on the ship. And we had a cast of, you know, 12 or something. And I was like, wow, that must be lonely. I should invite him to do things with us. She might like, have had an ulterior motive. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's Kindness. Awesome. I was trying to be kind. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you mm -hmm. felt pity for him, is what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny enough, that I remember that she did actually introduce or uh, invite me to go with the cast to a movie, mm -hmm. and somewhere along the line, so there's a whole group of us. Bobby and I sort of paired up, and it was them and us, mm -hmm. and we spent the whole evening talking, and it was the first time when that sort of friendship, that connection was made. Do you remember that? Yes, I yeah. remember that. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a lot of the, the, I guess the stereotype of, you know, an illusion show, you know, where you're cutting women in half and making people appear, disappear kind of thing. Uh, you know, it has that, that traditional dynamic and I don't even need to describe it. Everyone I think knows kind of, you know, what that feels like. And you guys do things a little bit different. You know, you can, and you talk about it a little bit in the the fool us clip about kind of uh, you talk back and forth, and and you have Bobby has a more uh, kind of set character. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, I'm not sure how much of that was by design or just sheer rebellion <laughs> by Bobby. Uh, you know, she pretty much just goes, "I'm not doing that." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, "Okay, well, let's use that." Um, that's maybe a little bit of an exaggeration. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I'm not a dancer, so, you know, some of the things that traditional, right. I think the traditional dynamic of a magician and his assistant, um, when magicians were predominantly males was that, you know, the assistant was a dancer and she did choreography and, and left the stage. And I know that there are people who broke that mold. Um, and there's a lot of women in magic now. But that's a traditional, you know, sort of dynamic, right. and I knew right away that did not fit my personality or or myself. So if I'm gonna have to be, you know, in the box, so to speak, then I I wanted it to be motivated, motivated, and more mm -hmm. true to my personality because I didn't want to have to act, um, you know, I, I didn't want to have to put on a, a character that didn't feel comfortable to me. And well, and honestly, as a as the magician, I wasn't really interested in revisiting the traditional. Dynamic. Right. I like the idea that she had a very unique and defined personality, and once we were married, that kind of <laughs> that kind of bickering back and forth between a husband and wife is something that's relatable to a lot of people in relationships. Mm -hmm. So um, it brought a brought a more human and relatable um, aspect to the show than we would have if we were, you know, the mysterious magician right. and his 
submissive assistant. And yeah. none of that seemed real interesting. Well, and you're me. not all that mysterious. You're yeah. more, you know, friendly <laughs> and comedy driven. You know, what? it's what? actually comedy when you try to be mysterious. And I would say the same for myself. Like I can't really be, I'll be like, no, I can't be that serious. So Yeah, and, and I think that audiences nowadays especially uh, they really value authenticity. Um, and so they're, that kind of classic magician and assistant dynamic doesn't feel real really anymore. You know, it's, I mean, some people can pull it off certainly, but yeah, I think for the most part, people kind of go, all right, here we go. You know, it's a magic show. But when you actually have a more, um, more dynamic kind of interaction between the two of you and everything, it's a lot better and people, it resonates with people more. And a lot of it, Ben, was not specifically, I'd love to say like by design, we crafted this, but a lot mm -hmm. of it happened organically. Sure. Um, you and I were talking yesterday about just having flight time on your show, uh, doing it over and over again. You start to feel the rhythms and, and know where the audience is responding. And it was those kind of <laughs> unrehearsed moments where Bobby and I would, because uh, my show is very, open framed it's not heavily scripted so mm -hmm. when we would do things in the moment and watch the audience respond to those things they got incorporated into the show so a lot of that grew organically and not by design but more just because of the truth of the dynamic of you know she doesn't really want to have to deal with the magician who's kind of full of himself and she Ooh, lets the audience man. know that yeah yeah uh yeah, I, I, I was going to say something related to that, and I don't remember what it was. So we're going to change the subject. Um, Adam, <laughs> this is not going to be a long convo, but you guys saw the Blue Angels fly over yesterday. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. amazing. It looked awesome. Had you guys seen the, it before, them them before? Yes. I, I actually have, um, and my dad reminded me when I sent him, because my dad was a, was a former pilot, not a, not a Blue Angels pilot, but he was in the Navy, and he was a... a, a had his pilot's license and was a flight instructor back in the day when I was just a wee little thing. And uh, he said that we had gone to an air show when I was young and saw the Blue Angels. And I was like, well, I remember that. But I also performed in front of about 50,000 people at an air show with the Thunderbirds um, when I was, you know, a grown up. So as a singer, I did that. A before. rare so, pairing. A rare too. pairing. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. So that was fun. Cool. And according to Ben, I was at Kitty Hawk with the Wright brothers. <laughs> Oh God! You're never gonna live it down. You're never gonna live it. Down. <laughs> I'll help that you know. I, he's we, legitimately making me laugh. I, I refer to you as Young Ben, yes. by the way. So yeah. Like, yes. Hey, Young Ben wants us on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think a lot of people do that. You know. Does that mean that we have a friend who's old Ben? I don't know. No, I think yeah. no. No. He's forever young. Yeah, he's forever young. Forever young. That's why the show is called Forever Young. You are too, because you'll be I'm like seventy and still look the same. I'm sure of it. I don't know. I'll have to change the hairstyle when I'm 70, I think. <laughs> it changes you itself. It. You could totally rock it. <laughs> I think it'll look good when it's like salt and pepper, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I used to actually, I've never admitted this, but I used to like, because I, I actually have gray hair starting to come in. Oh. And I used to dye it, and now I don't. I'm like, you know what? Like, as long as I still have hair, like that's great. And then you, you look so young. If you if you left it alone, people would think you added in the salt and pepper. You know, I'm <laughs> like, serious. People well, don't I, think like, you that. I like having kind of the juxtaposition of like yeah. looking really young, but then like they're like, wait, he might actually be older. You know, he's got like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, as far as the gray hair, I always figured if it's turning gray, it's planning to be there for the long haul. <laughs> right. And I like that idea. Uh, hey, Tristan, by the way, my friend Tristan, who uh, also helps work at the Matt King show, uh, wow. not as much anymore, but he, because he got a regularish job, but uh, he tuned in for the first time on the show, because it's nice. he's in Vegas too, so it's hard for him to wake up at 10 a.m. to to watch a show. Um, so what I wanted to talk, I actually wasn't planning on this originally, but in your clip that I showed, did you guys do the zip line at the Rio? Is that what yeah. I saw? Yes. Was that the most like Tara? Are you guys like adrenaline junkies? Because I no, well, no, I don't even no. want to say that. I didn't. It wasn't scary at all. Actually, I was like, oh, I, I was a little. Yeah. Can it, I say that? I don't want Penn and Teller to get upset or the Rio. I don't think. I, well, here, let me. Frame they might it. be watching your show. Let me frame it a little you bit. You frame now, it. We, when we were doing the bio package, and Ben knows it, it, it they film like all day for that right. thirty seconds. Yeah. And and they look for 
a way to tell a story in that 30 seconds. And we're scuba divers and Bobby's like gone skydiving and stuff like that. So Adrenaline Junkie sort of became a little bit of what they thought, okay, maybe we can use that. And um, we did a whole segment in the pool, like a scuba diving thing that didn't make the cut. But as we were filming that, this, the zip line was going on above us. And we were like, we were actually looking to figure out how to go on that for free. Yeah, of course. So we, yeah, we like, we're like, hey, like, you guys want to like, do that for free. Yeah. Yeah, we pitched it and said, hey, um, you know, we'll do the zip line if you want to do that. And they're like, really, you do that? <laughs> and literally, yeah, we were just trying to get a free ride. But I didn't find it scary at all. And also, I mean, the other thing is, I wouldn't consider us adrenaline junkies. Like, we don't, we're not like, we got to have something super scary. But it's more just we're adventurous. So we're like, right. yeah, we'll do that. I mean, there are, I have limits. You know, I don't really want to do like a crazy bungee jump from somewhere, but I did jump out of an airplane, which wasn't nearly as scary to me as like potentially a bungee jump. I don't know why. Maybe the parachute. Right. So that, that was my next question was if you if you like skydived or done other, you know, big zip line kind of things in your in We've your done time. zip lines pretty much anywhere we could do zip lines. Yeah. But, but none of them seem that, like in in if I'm being rational about it, it doesn't I feel that they have all the safety measures in place. So it's more right. about the adventure than the adrenaline. Uh, it's yeah, you know, we're adventurers. Yeah, we like to try <laughs> yeah. stuff. If that's if you go somewhere and that's what they're known for, we try to do it. Sure. So, yeah. So, uh, are you guys foodies at all? Do you like food? I, I mean, love food, but I'm not very experimental. I know what I like. Yeah, I I would say we are in a sense, but not like crazy eat things that are still moving kind of stuff, you know? Right. Yeah. My husband and I actually saw a video yesterday about people eating live octopus. And I'm like, yeah. no, nope. we were going to, um, <laughs> we, they, we were contemplating doing the amazing race at one point. We were, and, recruited. Uh, we were kind of recruited, but, um, at some point we had a, a deal that if, if a challenge came up or whatever, that you had to eat something, it would be him that would eat it because I was like, I'll lose the race over food. I won't, there are right. things I will not eat. Yeah, and I will. It. I'll be like, I don't care if we win this race. At that point, no amount of money is going to make me eat a cricket. So. Well, and funny enough, so we were recruited for Amazing Race, and at the last minute, they called up and said, uh, "Yeah, actually, what we really need is Bobby to go on Survivor." <laughs> and I only had not, I think, not me. Just I like, had like <laughs> four hours to decide, and I said no. And the reason was because of the food. I was like, I can't start right. to death. First of all, I like to eat. And second of all, what they do eat to stay alive, I don't like. So <laughs> I right. said no. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. At that point, it, you kind of go, how is this really going to leverage my business all that way? Yeah. Well, he was like, you should have just gone on and then gotten yeah. kicked off. Yeah. Strike out in the first round. And I was like, I didn't think of that. I just panicked right away and was like, no way I can go on there. I don't need to. Well, you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's, so, could have been funny. Yeah. Um, so I bring up the food because every show I ask people, since we're currently, as of this filming, we're on quarantine. I ask people about their quarantine eats. Oh. Um, like, you know, if you've eaten anything interesting or fun or if you've been cooking anything cool, like while you've been quarantined. But for you guys, since you travel so much, I thought we'd add in travel eats as well. Oh, OK, cool. Harder. Well, I, I can take you in both directions. Uh, a couple of years ago, I got a volunteer up on stage in the show and I really just sort of hit it off with this guy. And on a cruise, you live with your audience. So we got to meet him and his uh, husband, and we, it turns out they live really close to us. And- I wondered where you were going with this. Yeah. Well, they're foodies. They are foodies. <laughs> on Facebook, right? So right. now we have this sort of, I don't know they realize that we're in competition, but- It's not really a competition, but it's an inspiration. The, yeah, they're there are inspirations. They're constantly posting what they're having for dinner. And then, and they, it seems that they have an, a limitless bar set up in their house. So they're always making cocktails and, accompanying their food with the proper beverages that go with it. So then we got a little inspired and started doing that here yeah. as well. So yeah, prior, prior to the lockdown, we, we would hang out with them, but, uh, now that we can't be in person, we're, we're sort it's, of just following. It's a little soon. intimidating to have them over to the house. Now when we see like the level <laughs> at which they can, 
yeah. put meals together and stuff. But I would say yeah. we haven't we haven't traveled any. I mean, you might have eaten some crazy things, but I haven't really. And uh, it doesn't have to be it can just be something that's you know amazing. A yeah. highlight. Well, we've you- eaten all the things you're supposed to eat. So like we've had right. pizza and Naples. Right. And um, Euros in Greece and Santorini, you know, and um, or I guess you could say Greek salad in Greece. You know, we so if you go somewhere and that's what they're known yeah. for. Thai food in um, Thailand. Yeah. Chinese food in China. Yeah. We've it's, done all that. <laughs> yeah. so, Are there any highlights, any favorite meals that you've had? Or the, the, mm-hmm. Thailand was unbelievable. And I'm I'm actually relatively new to Thai food. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I had like sort of the basic plain thing you can order from a Thai menu in my in my wheelhouse. And then when we went to Thailand, I sort of branched out. She a bit. stepped it up. Yeah. But yeah, that was um, absolutely unbelievably good. Yeah. Some of the cooking in um, like Tuscany, Italy, oh, just mm, yeah. unbelievable. So, and really and, it's bonkers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, amazing. I try to, that, I always joke that I ate my way through Europe. So yeah. there's beautiful architecture and scenery and all this and, you know, art everywhere in Europe, but I only, I really only cared about the food. Yeah. I was like, what are they known for here? When can we eat it? <laughs> so, Spain, France, Greece. Yeah. Um, it was fun. Everywhere. Yeah. 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 So, and now that we've been on quarantine, I'm just eating a whole lot of ice cream, which I never ate before ever, <laughs> ever. I was not an ice cream person. Now every night it's like a ritual. Okay. Yeah. I'm having ice cream. We're, we're using the quarantine to get in shape. And it turns out <laughs> is a shape. So true. Oh man. Yeah. It's, it's been bad. I love to cook. And so I've just been like, Hey, you know what? I'll make this thing. It uses a stick of butter and you know, yeah. it'll, it'll be great. Like, and I've been, I'm not good at like baking, right? That's like a new thing for me. Cause it scares me. Cause it's like actual science. Right. Like, because I like, like normal cooking, you can kind of adjust it as you go, but it's yeah. like baking. It's like, once it's done, like you're, you know, you're done. You're locked in and it can be bad. I, yeah. I've been making like, yeah, literally things that use a stick of butter and all this sugar and everything, but it's so good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. My first attempt at baking as a teenager, I did not know there was a difference between teaspoons and tablespoons uh, and baking powder and baking soda. soda. So I made cookies that were like little hockey pucks. By the time. <laughs> <laughs> they were beautiful, but it turns out baking soda. Were they- were they hockey pucks in in thickness or density? Yes. <laughs> Both. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You could chip a tooth on them. Let's put it that wow. way. Yeah. Well, I just made snickerdoodles for the first time oh. and was I was blown away by how amazing they were. That's like, awesome. Like totally shocked. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was kind of fun. Um, let's see. I have a let's see, what do you want to ask? Oh, so I commented, people can ask questions to you guys. I don't know if anyone's watching, but I literally, I can't see the counter, so <laughs> whatever. But, uh, you know, if, if people have questions, they'll put that there. Um, I'm going to give you guys the chance to ask me a question. Uh-huh. Even though it's been a very good conversation already, but if you want to ask me something specific or embarrassing, then you can you can do that. Embarrassing. Or, or embarrassing. There's, more, there's games and things coming up. So, like, I'm going to get revenge on you guys in a second. Ah. So, so ask what you want. Okay. Well, on stage, what what has been your most embarrassing moment on stage? I know the one I want to tell, but I'm not ready to put it out into the public. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fair. I'm saving content. Off, I might need to hear that offline. Well, let me, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you guys. But uh, let's see. Another embarrassing, embarrassing moment. Okay, well, okay, so this isn't, uh, it's not super, super embarrassing, but it's kind of one of those like, all right, what am I doing with my life kind of moments. Okay. So this was, and actually, this was the first time, so my girlfriend and I were long distance for about a year and a half before uh, before she moved to Vegas. And this was the first time, she was actually visiting uh, one of those times, and this was her first time seeing my full show. I took her to a holiday party uh, for this group, and it was just like, all of the things about an event that you don't want, right? And like, and you guys know, cause you know, with like corporate events, like how this can go. But mm-hmm. they had a dance floor in the middle of the room with no yeah. tables there. The tables were just, you know, around the room. I was on a stage, which was like, cool. I'm like, cool, I'm on a stage. But <laughs> the guy uh, who was very, very nice, but he introduces me and 
as he's doing the intro, he goes, you know, we have a really special treat for you guys today. Oh, I forgot to tell you, by the way, the dance floor was filled with balloons, like oh. balloons, oh. balloons, and Perfect. the little kids were running around and popping them, and it was horrible. So I'm already <laughs> kind of like, I just want to go home, right? But uh, so he introduces me as, uh, guys, we have a really special treat for you today. We have the greatest magician in Las Vegas, Bill Young. <laughs> 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 and you know, <laughs> I yeah, you know, I do the comedy magic thing, so there's no way I'm gonna let that go. Yeah. Right. So I, you know, I run on stage and I was just like, okay, a couple things with that. Right. <laughs> like one, best magician in Vegas. I'm definitely the best magician in the building. For sure. <laughs> but and then I was like, and also my name is Ben, and you know. Yeah, it's one of those things, though. I think that uh, being in the moment like that, people people like it because obviously I'm not just like sticking to the script. I'm adapting. Yeah, but it was one of those things where it's like the whole event was just kind of you have that feeling like this is just kind of blah, and then and then that happens. And you're like oh, the show I bring her to. This is great. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Marissa's like watching it. And she was, I think she was filming it too. Oh, was, good. She was planning on it. And then she just kind of like puts her phone down. Oh, <laughs> we had a similar, the very first corporate job that Bobby did with me um, was at a place in Georgia. Don't say names. Though. I won't say no names. names. <laughs> and Let's just say the person introducing us had a very bizarre name. Right. And, um, which I assume was a nickname, but let's just pretend it was Wart. Like it was a name, like if you if he went by Wart, right? You know. Right. So and so, hey, nice to meet you, Wart. You know, you're like okay. So we came in, we set up, and uh, we had we had illusions. We did. And everything, and go ahead and do the. Uh, or you want me to? Well, they had been they had been out all day playing golf in the sun and doing all these things. So they were, I mean, it, the show was at, you know, seven thirty eight at night. And so they had been at it all day. Yeah. Um, and then, so he comes out and he's like, uh, so I know you guys have been out all day. We've been doing a lot of things and most of you are tired, but, uh, we've got magician Fred Becker here and he brought along Bobby. I don't know what that's all about, but she sure is pretty. And here they are. And that was our introduction. And I'm like, you don't know what that's all about. My name? He, you don't know what. He brought his assistant. Her name's Bobby. Her name's Bobby. That's I don't all. know what that's all about. I don't about. know what that's all about. And I was like, your name and his is. his name's Wart. Wart. You know. Right. Was like, like, what? It was, I don't know. Like, it was really fun. It, and she was, yeah. she's like, so this is your life off of cruise ships, huh? I was like, yeah. Let's go back to cruise ships. <laughs> yeah. No, Although, very, a quick little thing on, do you, do you know Matt Marcy? We uh, used to- Not personally, but yeah. We used to rotate um, with Matt and John Chirac and some other magicians um, on, a, on a ship and the cruise director, you know- We had a God cruise director that was cruise always director, making- He just was making, always making gas. And um, so he went to introduce Fred at one point and he was like, now let's bring him to the stage. Here he is. He called me John Marcy. No, it was Fred Marcy. No, I think he called me. To, he no. like mixed John Chirac and Matt Marcy. It was Fred Marcy. It's better. My way's funnier. No, it was Fred Marcy. Anyway, the point is, I was like, uh, that's not what his not even, name no. is, but okay. Yeah. So, so we've had that too. And also people forgetting your name, like oh. the cruiser oh. forgetting you, like oh, leading up to the big yeah. announcement and then being like, hey, here he is. Let's hear it for him. Yeah, it's and I, what people don't realize is that like how much that can throw us off. Like yeah. it's literally the beginning of the show, and we have to try to get over like yeah. the fact that no one knows who we are, and people don't remember our names. We're clearly not that important, you know. And and it's not yeah. even that, like our egos are that fantastic, but it's just like you know, yeah. come on, get my name right, please. I, I definitely have been introduced as Bobby Becker and Fred. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, finally got top billing. I did have a, a a cruise director. It was the second show on the cruise, so I'd already been on once. And he comes out and he goes, "Folks, you loved him. We're bringing him back. What's his name?" 
Yeah. I bet you don't know. And I, I mean, this was, he was actually a friend. So I know he just like mind wiped. Yeah. And I actually fell through the curtain laughing my butt off because I could have helped him and I just let, I was giddy. (laughs) You were giddy. You used the word. I think you, you know, I think you're the first guest to ever use the word. <laughs> but maybe that's, that because I throw in words, you know, like you saw in the little highlight video, like I throw in words like phalange, where no, one, no one's going to use it in an actual sentence. <laughs> oh, I would have come up with something. Yeah, I'm sure you would have. Uh, so the last question of the formal interview section is, The show is called Forever Young, and Forever Young is not only a play on my name, but it's kind of a mindset of, you know, staying, you know, kind of um, youthful about the world around you and curious and kind of being filled with wonder and all that thing, all that stuff. So what do you guys do to stay forever young? Fred does that way better than I do. I I love contemplating being a senior citizen. I like the lifestyle. (laughs) I really do. (laughs) I've been out in my garden lately trying to learn about plants and how to keep them alive and things. But uh, you're definitely a little child. And uh, yeah, I'll never actually grow up. I don't think Uh, he likes to keep his room messy. And um, that's that's one way that you forever young. I I think you guys can answer for yourselves, but I didn't think about answering for each other. (laughs) Each other, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Fred likes to collect comic books and read comics and watch comic book movies. Yeah, I actually said this yesterday. I, I think my adult life is dedicated to living out all the dreams of 13 year old me. Yeah. Like uh, mentally, I've never changed. Everything else is just like ha- making all that stuff happen that I was hoping would happen in my life yeah. at age 13. He's definitely that's, that's very poignant. He's actively working towards staying forever young. I mean, <laughs> for real, to the point of he wants a secret hidden room oh. and he pouts when I talk about that's not in the budget right now. Yeah. So, right. I like bookcase swings open. Do, do you guys layer. know Tom Vorjahan? Yes. You know I know. So he was, uh, he's a magician friend of mine. I've known him forever. And he was on the show last week and he's building a new house in Florida and he built a bookcase that oh, you you pull the book and boom, the thing yeah. slides open and that's what I, it's I will out. have that then. He yeah. will have that. I believe once, you. Yeah, once, I, in fact, I would have had it had not all my shows be canceled for like Who knows ever. Why? Yeah, the year. forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no yeah. Um, but yeah, it kind of put a cramp in my budget. I was like, okay, we'll put that on hold for right now, but that'll be the first thing that comes back. <laughs> That's the priority. <laughs> well, we'll build you a garden, Bobby, that you can go and be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I know nothing about gardening. It's just oh, I course. found myself lately out in the garden, like senior citizens, observing the bumblebees and the plants. And I've I've been yeah. the same way. Like Marissa uh, can attest. Like I've been like, we should get a hummingbird feed. Yes. <laughs> if we had hummingbirds on our patio. <laughs> exactly. I want birds and everything. We've I, had that. It's actually pretty cool. I've been playing cool. with yeah. this yeah, world and all that. Yeah. It, I want, one of those like the world is in a crisis and we're, I'm like, we need, we need, yes, we need a hummingbird, hummingbird. Exactly. But you know what? You got to stay sane right now. And oh, uh, those sure. little things bring you joy. So for yeah, sure. I, I'm having my dad build me a squirrel picnic table. So yeah. Have you seen those? Do you know what she's talking about? Oh, you got to Google it's like it. like a miniature picnic table. It's you much put smaller stuff than in, that. And the squirrels sit up on it and oh. eat. And it, yeah, Google yeah, it. It's, Google it. Oh my it's, Adorable. That's fantastic. I wish you would have told me that. I would have made that the spotlight of awesome at the end of the show. <laughs> oh, yes. so we're actually going to play a game now. Are you okay. ready for this? We're going to play a game called the Whatever Wheel. Uh, and I'm going to bring it up here. We'll do a little screen share action. Let me pop it up onto the thing like that. Okay. We're going to move this around like that. And look how techy I am. Don't worry. We'll make it big so you can see it. There you go. So there's the Whatever Wheel. There's different little like improv games. Don't overthink it. Just play along, have fun with it, get as crazy as you need to, and uh, it'll be fun. So check this out. So we're going to spin the wheel. <laughs> All right. So we landed on uh, parental advice, uh, which is what well, you guys are actual parents. So this will be, but I'm going to ask you parental advice. I have the notes on my phone. 
and you have to, you know, answer me as if you're my parents. Okay. So I've got one question that I want to ask you. Opposing views. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. So we'll start with Papa. Um, Papa, how yes. do you think I should ask? Yes, you? young Ben. <laughs> young I Bill. I crushed on a girl. How do you think I should ask her out to the virtual prom? Ah. Okay. Um, yeah, what you, what you want to do. Uh-oh, I'm afraid. <laughs> is um is this like what kind of approach or yeah. is that like well, you know just you know what worked on your mother <laughs> <laughs> it was it was not flowers she was not impressed with flowers at all she like instead i won her heart with a bouquet of cheese <laughs> true story you know that's so your advice thing. is yeah is find out what she Find out what she really likes instead of um, oh, instead of flowers. Yes, you're not saying that one cheese fits all. Uh, I, it was a cheese of the month club, is what actually oh, said. Yeah. This might be the man for me. <laughs> actually, it was football. It was tickets to a football game and a cheese of the month club. Oh, that's true. You did yeah. both. Yeah. You took another guy to the football game, though. That's so true. Was, I did. Hmm. Okay. Well, putting that aside. Uh, <laughs> Mommy Bobby, how do you think I should ask my crush to well, virtual? I, wish, I was so excited to have opposing views, but I don't. You I think, feel this. You think the platter is the way to go? Well, I'm, I still think the same thing. I mean, I do think if you if the, if this is a girl that you know really well, then you yes, find out what she likes and make her experience unique. Don't do what everybody else is doing. You know, think outside the box because yes, um, you know, Fred knew I liked football and he, he knew I loved cheese and I had made several statements of, I don't understand why people waste their money on flowers when they just die. <laughs> so he wasn't going to just all of a sudden send me flowers, you know, and you that you're getting flowers. I mean, you're yeah. getting cheese. You're getting cheese. You're getting cheese. <laughs> I was going to say, does she like cheese? <laughs> does she like cheese? What does she like? You know, that makes it something that's, you know, really outside of the box. Yeah. Outside of the box thinking is impressive to me. Think about her. Yeah. Right. Self. That's right. Yeah, I I wish we could have opposed our advice though. I don't know. That was good. That was solid. <coughs> I'm so sorry. You. I felt that coming. There was nothing I could. Okay. We'll edit it out in post. He's allergic <laughs> to flowers. So, so yeah. next up, we have trivia. Oh uh, yeah, uh, uh, strong suit. Oh no. Okay, here we go. So, what is the color of a giraffe's tongue? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, it's not pink. It's not. It's Gray. Gray brown. I don't know. That's probably that's probably close enough. The answer I found was black. Oh, so, you know, I'm, I have pictures of the kids being licked by a giraffe at one of those parks. Yeah, <laughs> so, I've actually fed a giraffe out of my hand. I'm like, so. what color is it? That's was right. It like one, was it one of the, like the drive-through like? Yes. Things? Well, this was a walkthrough. And we've done some walkthroughs and drive-throughs. It's so cute. It could have been. It could have been the Tiger King for all I know. <laughs> I'm not sure where we were. So, did you see that uh, they're making a scripted series of Tiger King, like based on Tiger King, and Nicolas yeah. Cage is playing Joe Exotic? Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Just, yeah. Anyways, uh, what year did Coca Cola launch their first recyclable plastic bottle? If you get within two or three years, then we'll consider it close enough. I would never know the answer to that. Uh, recyclable plastic bottle. Recyclable plastic bottle. Recyclable plastic would have been. Uh, I don't know. 98. 1980. 1980. That's actually very, very close. It was 78. Oh. Really? Okay. Oh, I was see, thinking I recycling. I almost said 79 because I was like, I was on fashionable until edge. later in my life. But I guess so that's like two almost hits that you guys have here. They could do uh, glass bottles though. And I wasn't thinking about that because back in the day. Right. Hmm. I was just an infant back then. I wouldn't have known. Me too. <laughs> Me three. Uh, what, <laughs> what color is the top of a rainbow? Oh. Red. Does it start with purple? Where's like, yeah, I don't know. I'll go with red. 
I have That's no correct. idea. Is it? That's okay. Good. Yeah, it's Roy I'm not, Dove. I'm not, oh, Dove. Yeah, yeah the Roy yeah. Dove, yeah. yeah. Uh, the I'm Arkham. analytical, not visual. Yeah. And then lastly, how many films does Sean Connery play James Bond in? Ooh. Oh, we have the ultimate collection too. Yeah. He'll know this. I, we started watching them all. I think I made it to like six. Okay. <clears throat> Dr. No, uh, from Russia with Love. Geek. Um, Should I go get the box? Can we nope, cheat? That's no. <sighs> um, what was the next one? Uh, I don't know, but we don't have all day. Thunderball. Live and Let... No, I mean, what was it called? Um, not Live and Let Die. It was... You only live twice? Are you thinking you only live twice, twice, thank you. Um, diamonds are forever. Meanwhile, I'm like... And so... <laughs> right. Gold finger. So seven, I think. Seven? That's correct. I was going to say, I've seen six and, and he was in all those. The, so The last one was <laughs> Never Say Never. And uh, yeah. Good for you. That makes up for your... You're like close misses in the beginning. <laughs> I was, I mean, the fact that you, you didn't just like stab in the dark like a number, but you actually sat and figured them all out. Uh, right. I, I figured I would know if I really put the gray matter to it. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, Fred's a little bit of a nerd, and yes. we're going to segue into what I know yep. he's most excited about with this show. Um, it is time for show and tell. And do you guys see the little Easter egg that I put in here for you too? Because I know you like a certain show. Love it. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know if Bobby watches it, but I know. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. mm -hmm. It's oh, a yeah. part of our day to day uh, language. My, even my parents. Quote the show my dad day. quotes the show now because we got them watching it. Oh, it's so yeah. good. It's so good. Yeah. I've been re watching it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to do my show and tell first because it's very short. Um, okay. There's no story behind it. Uh, this uh, is a little is it's a little genie lamp that I. Uh, Quick. You guys have one as well. Yeah. Why did you just happen to have that behind you, Fred? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yours is so much bigger than mine. Uh, <laughs> it's, so genetics. So where did you get yours? Um, I it was either Israel or Jordan. I can't. Okay, was, I got yeah. mine in Cutter. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no story. It's just that. It's really I, cool. Yeah, you, you walk yeah, behind you. Like, I have to have that. It looked yeah. like a little genie lamp, and like, and it would fit in my luggage. It's really it's cute. cute. Yeah, exactly. Cute. It was like three bucks or something. You know. That's awesome. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's it. That's my story. But yeah, I was on one of the military tours that I've done, and it was uh, really cutter. And, and, it. and it probably wasn't made in cutter. It was probably made somewhere else. But you know, whatever. So, all right. I'm so excited about yours. I'm so excited. All right, as Ben mentioned, <clears throat> giant nerd. And I have, shows up. This was Giant X Men number one, which is the first appearance of many of these characters that we know as the X Men today. You can't see it because it's in front of your face. Right. Well, no, <clears throat> they could see it. Like, yeah, we could see it. And see uh, it? sadly, it's hard to move it backward. So <laughs> I, just, I just joined a group on Facebook called old guys that like old comics. And uh, so I, I had this out oddly because I was showing that to uh, some of the old guys in the group. And uh, that's what you've been doing down here while you're not unpacking boxes. Right, right. Yeah. And that, if if I had kept it in really good condition, it would be worth, you know, something like $30,000 or something. And I paid 50 cents for it. But you didn't keep it in really I good condition. I did not keep it in very good oh. condition. So it would it's probably worth a lot more than 50 cents, but... Mm. Yeah, you read it a lot, that's why. I did. Uh, and I felt better because the group the group on Facebook was like, dude, you got your money's worth out of that. That's, uh, you know, look at... That's a piece of your history. So don't feel bad that the cover's held on by, um, you know, scotch tape and stuff. I love that and, the truth of what he's doing in his office all day just came out on your program, Ben. Yeah. Yep. For everyone to see. <laughs> now, yes, I am a giant nerd. My <laughs> wife, however, is the opposite. So opposites attract. So I have a show and tell of hers. You brought a show and tell for me? Oh, I, yes. 
This is her Super Bowl trophy sure because Mrs. Them. Becker has, is now the two-year reigning championship in her fantasy football league. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, if we have football this year anyway, I yeah, might make it a third time's a charm. But, three P. Yeah. yeah. So she knows all the players, all the stats, all the everything about football while I read comic books and practice card tricks. It's that's a match made in heaven. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, did you uh, did you mention what year that comic was? Uh, I believe it was 1975. Wow. And you said uh, to me that it's like the Silver Age of comics. Is that right? Yeah. So Golden Age go back to like um, the original Superman and Batman, and uh, Marvel comics sort of is you know around the early 60s is when they started what's called Silver Age comics. Mm hmm. And they, um, you know, different, they're actually even different sizes and different collectors and things like that. So did you buy that in 1975? It says on it. <clears throat> I did. I actually bought it at a convenience store for 50 cents. And I remember actually picking it up and I could basically afford one comic book a week at the time in my youth. And this one was about double the cost of most of the ones. And I hadn't really read the X-Men, uh, but something about that cover kind of grabbed my attention. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a thick comic, so I figured for 50 cents it was worth uh, the extra investment. And I picked up that one that week, and it, it was it was it, it, if I had kept it in mint condition, that would probably be the most valuable comic book I have. And I have a lot. A lot. <clears throat> you could have sold it and built the secret room bookcase door yeah yeah well and that's where the bookcase will go it'll go into where all the comic books are held so oh yeah like your comic book vault that's like uh temperature controlled and and all that yeah should be but <laughs> yeah. well, you know, if you're gonna do it you gotta go all in you know um, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, every week on the show, I do a segment uh, that my mom hates called Artsy Fartsy. Uh, and my mom hates it because uh, this is where I try to do crafts. And my mom was an art teacher for 30 years. Okay. I can't draw. I'm horrible at artsy things. So it's me trying to figure out things that I can do. And this is cool. You guys probably know this, actually. It's, uh, it's a little gag prank kind of thing that you can pull on your family where it looks like uh, wallpaper or whatever, this is actually on our, uh, on our cabinet, where it looks like right. the, uh, the paper is peeling off, like the wallpaper or the paint is kind of peeling off. <laughs> My mom is going, uh-oh, oh no. <laughs> um, so it's the classic wallpaper gag and uh, it's super easy to make and it looks really cool. And actually we put it on, the, uh, on our, cabinet because our walls don't work with it at all like we don't have any other services in the house that work but i'll show you guys how to make one for those of you that are uh that are watching so you just need uh, some uh a scrap of paper you're going to fold it in half and then you're going to along that folded seam you're going to tear uh essentially like a, a triangle all right it doesn't have to be like perfect but you're kind of going for a triangle type shape and i didn't do a great job on this but it'll be okay so that you have something that looks kind of like that and then on one of the ends or one one of the halves you're going to uh roll it like this kind of uh towards where the i guess if you were doing origami there'd be like a mountain kind of fold so you roll it up towards that like that and then what happens is you take some double stick tape uh, and you just stick it to the wall and it looks like it gives that illusion that it, it, if I put it up, like if you pretend that my shirt was like wallpaper, then it looks like it's sort of peeling off. Oh. Did you get another <laughs> one already? Did you know that? I did. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, that's one of those things that like, one of those weird things magicians just know. Yeah. Well, I think Chad Long does a whole thing with it. And I feel like I learned it from Billy McComb for some reason. I don't There's some really that. cool, really cool things you can do with it. Paul Harris had a thing with it with a coin, um, but uh, it's a it's just a fun little. It's one of those things that you could just like slap on somewhere in the house and let someone like stumble upon it. 
and yeah. uh, and just yeah, uh, or go to a friend's house and have that. Or go to a friend's house after this. Oh, is all oh gosh, sorry, I bumped into the wall. Look what happened. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. it creates a lot of excitement. <laughs> Look at all the excitement it's generating here. And then you reveal that it was a gag, and they are giddy. They're giddy. Wow. Two points for you guys. Plus, you got the Sean Connery question. So uh, I would be remiss if I didn't do one magic trick this whole show. Nice. So I'm going to do a card trick. And uh, I'm going to straight up say uh, that this is a trick that I teach. I have a course. Oh, let me get back there. But I do a. I have a course um, called Video Chat Magic, which is like a download that you can get off my website, where you can learn twelve tricks that you can do both in person and uh, over video chat. So you could FaceTime with friends and show it to them. So this is one of the things that I do in that. But I need a number from one to twenty. If people want to comment, and if it doesn't come in because of a delay, then I'll have you guys, uh, Beckers, give me a number. So a number <laughs> one to twenty for anyone who wants to do that. Um, if not, then we'll just get into it. And I think that there is a delay, so I'm probably just not going to wait. But I'll use the, I, I'm going to need another number later on, so I'll just use it when it comes in. So Fred and and or Bobby, would you give me a number from one to twenty? Five. Five. Okay. So the reason we're going to use a number is because obviously I can't have you take a card, right? So we use the number that you go. We just count down two, three, four, five cards. And this will be your card. I'm going to look away. I'll do this so that you know I'm not cheating. So everyone can see the card. Say yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. All right. And it goes back down like that and back into the deck. Now, this is uh, the deck is is shuffled, blah, 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 blah. You know, you know how, how magic goes. Uh, <laughs> we're going to try to find your card. The deck is actually going to find it by itself. It's a smart deck. You know, like a smartphone, it's a smart deck. So it's going to find the card sort of like a GPS. It's going to guide us to get there. So uh, Marissa actually commented with the number 18. But for this, I need a number from 1 to 10. So Fred and Bobby, do you want to just give me a number from 1 to 10? 8. 8. And we're not in cahoots. You guys didn't know I was going to do this. No. And you don't know what you're supposed to do. So we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cards. And uh, we get the 8 of hearts. Now, I'm guessing by the skepticism in your face, that was not your card. But I said that it's a smart deck. And like a GPS, it tells us how to get to your card. It tells us because it's an eight, we need to go eight more cards. And it's just a coincidence that you guys said eight before. But we go eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like that. What card did you guys pick? Nine, Nine of diamonds. diamonds. <laughs> Boom. <Whoa. laughs> like that. It's a smart deck. It's a lot of technology, lots of wires and Bluetooth and all that. Microchips. Plus, microchips, lots of microchips. But for anyone who's watching, that trick actually is super, super, super easy to do. And you can do it like I just did here. You can do it virtually. And it's, I think it's a pretty good trick. So anyways, we're closing in on the show. And at the end, we always uh, do a spotlight of awesome. And the Spotlight of Awesome is just a chance for me to show off something random and cool that I found on the internet. And uh, this is something that I've actually known about for a while. And I think you guys will recognize it as well because it features Dr. Richard Wiseman. So uh, let's bring this up here. I love optical illusions, so check this out. So <laughs> I love that so much. 
so no, cute. I love everything he does. He's I know, he's, he's so great. So uh, for those of you who aren't magicians, um, there's a giant magic convention, which is about the nerdiest thing that could exist, called Magic Live here in Vegas. And um, the Beckers and myself go every year. And uh, Richard Wiseman is uh, is an actual like doctor of psychology who's also a magician. And he always does some really cool stuff at the convention. Do you guys remember the show he did that had no performer? You remember that a few years ago? I missed one convention, so. Yeah, that maybe we been. missed that one. I remember um, him doing something uh, one year, but I don't remember. Doing something one year. Yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> cool. Good talk. We did miss one, though. We missed a convention and that everybody was, we were like, oh, but we were already booked like a year in advance right. when they announced the dates and we couldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that I think that's the only one I've missed since I we came have a, into magic. We have an awesome client that our rule is never say no to them. Right. So uh, occasionally we've missed things only because that one client goes, hey, we really need you this time. And we're like, okay, that's the rule. Never say no. Yeah, yeah I feel you. Well, we have reached the end of the show. Um, we'll do a little wrap up. If anyone wants to follow the back, I'll make that big so you can see. If anyone wants to follow the Beckers, um, there's Real Becker Magic on Instagram, Becker Magic on Facebook. Um, do you guys have anything? And you can follow me, of course, at Ben Young Live. And if you want to uh, book a virtual magic show, you can go to my website and contact me there. Um, I've been having a lot of fun doing virtual shows, which is a super weird thing that's new, but it's uh, it's been a blast. Um, do you guys have anything else that you wanted to plug? Anything going on? No, but um, if they go to those social media places, we have been putting up um, a little bit of a, a content. Yeah, some content. 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 Yeah, some stuff uh, that's in our archives of video of stuff we've done, either aboard ship or on a land tour. And then we've also started interviewing ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> which we call Becker answers. So they're questions that people pose and we just sit down and do, you know, like a five, 10 minute chat uh, about that particular topic. Which and is just cool because you guys have a really cool uh, experience being a married couple traveling around the world, performing on ships and everywhere else. Um, so you, you have a lot to say about a lot of interesting things that people maybe not, may not know about. So. Yeah, and our next one, actually next Monday, will be uh, about the experience of being on Penn & Teller and some of the thing craziness that happened to us uh, behind the scenes getting ready for that. So it, yeah. it should be a good story. Awesome. I well, I will watch it. Thank you guys so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks, yeah, we ben. love you, Ben. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thanks. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of you guys because we always end the show with a dad joke. Yeah, so I'm going to mute you guys because I got interrupted the last time I told the dad jokes. I'm just going to do it in the show. So, um, so here's your dad joke for the week. What's faster, hot or cold? Well, it's hot because you can catch a cold. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in to Forever Young. I will see you next week. Take care.